Good afternoon or morning, everybody. My name is Marco Innocenti, and uh, I'm here today to share with you the new trends in uh, soft tissue reconstruction of the lower extremity. Starting from the early days, uh, talking about reconstruction of the lower limb, uh, we must uh, still take into account uh, the work horses, which helped us uh, many times in the past. Most of the local flaps in the lower limb are either myocutaneous or muscle flap, like the tensor fasciolata, the medial gastro, and so on. And there are few fasciocutaneous, conventional fasciocutaneous flaps, including uh, probably the most used is the Schurer flap, you can see here, and still have some uh, indication in lower limb reconstruction. However, the conventional flaps has several limitations that you can find them listed here. First of all, they are more invasive because they sacrifice uh, major vessels sometimes. They sacrifice muscle and they have limits in flap design and more importantly in the arc of rotation, which is limited. And it is also limited the number of donor sites. And this is a very important uh, uh, point particularly talking about the two areas of, of the lower limb, the, the knee area and the lower uh, third of the leg. So uh, in the early days, uh, uh, constructing microsurgery was considered an extreme and demanding procedure to be applied only when conventional options were not effective. And you see a result uh, of uh, conventional free flaps, this is a myocutaneous uh, rectus abdominis uh, free flap. You see it covered the defect, but the aesthetics, the, the cosmetics is very poor, and uh, also the function is not the best. So from uh, the, 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 the commitment uh, uh, fill the hole, we, we move to refinement of uh, reconstructing microsurgery, and now it is, in my opinion, the ultimate surgical tool to be routinely applied in order to achieve optimal function and aesthetic outcome. So we shifted from the ladder, from the reconstructive ladder to the, to the concept of reconstructive elevator. The evolution in microsurgical reconstruction, in my opinion, is based on the increasing of the reliability. We have now uh, to take care of function also. So we don't have to limit our reconstruction to uh, uh, covering a defect, but also it must be functional. And it must be also uh, cosmetically uh, acceptable. Last but not least is the morbidity in the donor site, because we cannot uh, make a big damage in a donor site to uh, solve a problem in a distant area. In my opinion, in the past uh, 20 years, these are the real new things which has been uh, uh, proposed in the literature performance flaps, the propeller flaps, and the chimera flaps. Talking about uh, perforators flaps, we know that uh, as long as the anatomical understanding increases, uh, new options, uh, new technology uh, come out, and the knowledge of the angels. Uh, the, this is the real, uh, real kickoff point uh, uh, of uh, perforator flap philosophy. This is a, a main source vessel, a deep vessel. And you, you find here the three types of perforator which can uh, supply the skin. Any single perforator artery gives, uh, supplies a single angiosome which are connected each other to, uh, to form like a, a network uh, of different angiosomes which are uh, connected by potential links. The advantages of perforators flap are that they are less invasive, they don't sacrifice major vessel, they don't sacrifice muscle. They allow for a more flexible flap design and there is an increased number of donor size compared to conventional flaps and uh, it's possible to customize the procedure. The subdermal plexus is a superficial vascular network which allows for ultra thin flaps. This is a deep vessel this is an artery, we call it a blue artery. The other one is the red artery. And each artery has an anatomical territory, which means a portion of skin supplied by a single perforator under physiological condition. That means that the blue artery will have this angiosome and the 
red artery will have this adjacent. But if we ligate this artery, so if this is closed, what happened? It happened that there is a, a recruitment of the adjacent angiosome, and we have, according to the phenomenon, which is called hyperperfusion. So there are some links between this artery and this artery, which open when this artery is not working anymore. This is uh, an example, a fracture of the, of, the, of the tibia with the issues of, uh, of, the, uh, of the wound. This LT flap immediately after surgery. And you see the result after one year. This is a different case. It's a, a tumor case, a sarcoma involving the knee, including the skin, a tendon, and bone. So a very wide resection is done, a wide margin. This is the, res the resection, and this is the specimen, including uh, the, the, the joint, the, the patella, and the tendons. This is the orthopedic reconstruction. So what they did is to use a, a special prosthesis for uh, joint reconstruction. This is an allograft, osteo, uh, um, osteotendinous allograft. So there is a patella, a quadriceps tendon, and the patellar tendon, which is uh, suturated to the tibia here for function. This is our flap, an LT flap, thin LT flap. You see the reconstruction after a few months. So very good uh, function and very good aesthetics because the skin is thin and it is perfect for the function uh, for, for the knee in this case. So there are some variable which affect the cosmetic outcome of our flaps. We cannot not do anything about the tissue texture. We cannot do anything about the color, but we can work on thickness and shape. The thickness. Thickness is, is a very important point, considering that our flaps often are in, in articular areas, so they, we need thin skin, very pliable, which can be functionally useful to the bench. So often we have to debulk uh, the flap, particularly in Western countries, where the, the, the adipose tissue is, is quite a lot. It can be done, the bulking can be done as a primary procedure or secondary procedure, or just an example of primary procedure, considering then the concept is always the same. We can remove all this part of fat, we can remove the, the deep fascia, the above the fascia network, providing that we maintain a small perforator going to the subdermal depth network, which is enough to supply the flap. This is an example of primary uh, the bulking of a flap. This is a child, 15 years old. And you see that the LT flap uh, harvested with the skin, uh, subcutaneous fat, and deep fascia is quite thick. It's about uh, 3.5 centimeter. So we can debulk intraoperatively the flap and we, we achieve uh, an acceptable result. Here is about one centimeter, but here is still uh, two centimeters in my opinion. So the result is, is, is acceptable, but not really perfect. You see that even after 12 months, there is still some bulky in this flap, in the dorsum of the, of the foot. So if you do a secondary debulking, you see that finally we have really a very good contour of this, of this foot. The bulking can be secondary procedure in some case. This is a sarcoma resection of the, of the ankle. You see the ALT flap three months after is quite bulky. The, lymph, the lymphatic uh, uh, outflow is not restored, so it's quite bulky. There is a natural improvement after seven months, but it's not perfect. So we did the, is, uh, the, the bulking, after, and you see the result after 18 months. JP Hong suggested a, a new uh, plane of elevation of perforated flap, which is based on the, on the superficial fascia plane. The superficial fascia is a virtual fascia. It's like the fascia scarpa that is, a, is a present in the abdomen. It is almost everywhere. And you see that it, it is easy to, to distinct, to recognize the, the superficial fat and the deep fat because they are definitely different. The same uh, purpose, can be achieved with this technique that I, uh, I just described recently, which is, based, is, a, is a mix between the, the conventional uh, harvest of, of uh, 
and flatter type flap and uh, the harvest on the superficial plane. What I do is uh, to, to elevate the flap, uh, as you will see in the conventional way from medial, uh, identify the perforator and then uh, design a flap of the deep fascia around the perforator. And all, what, all the fat, which is between this fascia, deep fascia flap and the skin, all this flap is intact. That means that the, 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 the small branches of, of the perforator are protected inside, inside the fat. So it's absolutely safe, no risk. And this is the technique. I, I start uh, as a conventional uh, um, ALT flap harvest, so from medial to lateral. I identify the perforator, I decide the perforator toward the main pedicle, and at this point, I, once I realize that the, two perf the, the, enter, the piercing of the two perforator or the deep fascia, I harvest a flap here, which is elliptical in this case because we have two perforator, but uh, it can be also, as you will see, circular. And at the end, you have uh, something like this, and you can do easily the dissection of the superficial fascia because you have already your perforator identified and you don't risk to injure it. So this is what uh, I do, is uh, the definition of the flap, which protect the two perforator, there's a perforator here and a perforator here, so our flap will have this shape. And uh, so the design of the flap on, on the proximal part. So when this flap is uh, defined, it's very easy to proceed on the, on the superficial fascia is really straightforward and to go from here to the, per, to the perforator, it takes about five minutes. This is our elliptical uh, flap of, of fascia because in this case, there are two perforator. And this is circular because in this case, I have only one perforator. And this is what we, we can do. We can achieve uh, flaps of five millimeter, perfectly vascularized, big flap, like in this case. And you see, the dorsum of the hand in the, of, the, of the foot, in this case, doesn't need the uh, secondary debulking because it's already nice, it's already like, good like that. And also the donor side, this is the fascia, and you see that it is completely closed. So the, the, end, the end point is exactly like uh, JP Hong, uh, with the difference that uh, this procedure, in my opinion, is uh, affordable by most of the microsurgeons. Shape also is, is, the, is the variable with the, it has some impact on the, on the cosmetics of our flap. We suggest not to use, if it is possible to use this shape, but try to have a shape like this. This is a skip flap. And this is an example, uh, a, a, a heel injury. This is the AT flap which has been harvested, but this is the design of the flap inside the elliptical uh, flap. So we can shape it as accordingly to the, uh, the, the recipient area. You see, that's a nice uh, uh, reconstruction. It can be done with the, free, with the perforated flap. Uh, the instep flap or the medial plantar flap is also a relatively new uh, option to be used. Uh, the, the big advantage is that uh, it can repair like with like, particularly when we deal with the defect located in the sole of the foot or the, in the palm of the hand, because this is the only skin which is uh, uh, really uh, comparable to the, to the skin of the palm of the hand and of course of the sole of the foot. This is an example of squamous cell carcinoma located in a very difficult area because no local flaps can uh, reach this position. Instead of using a, a conventional fascia cutaneous flap, we can use a, a medial plantar flap from the contralateral foot. And you see that the result is really good. So propeller flap is, uh, is, is uh, they come from, they come from uh, the, the improvement of knowledge in perforator flap. 
They have been described by T.C. Theo first. Why is better to have a 180 degrees rotation? For two reasons. Uh, first of all, because the proximal uh, blade of the flap, the proximal blade is this, is harvested in an area where the tissue is more lax. So it's e easier to, to close direct to primarily this area. And the distal blade, this one, is rotated 180 degrees, is going to cover partially the donor side. So at the end, we have uh, a, a closure, uh, a coverage of the defect, but we have a, a direct closure also of the donor side. So the meticulous dissection of the perforators, the key to prevent complication, the pedicle of, of, a, of a propeller fret must be at least two centimeters, but the longer the better, because the longer is the, the pedicle, the less is the, the damage of the torsion of the pedicle uh, if it is distributed in a longer distance. Uh, so we have uh, this experience of uh, some years ago, we had uh, already 92 propeller flaps. So you see the different uh, source, most of our propelling the lower limb is based on a perforator coming from the posterior tibial artery. This is an example of a propeller flap based on the deep, on the perforator coming from the deep femoral artery. This is the knee joint, this is the lateral aspect of the tight. This is the, the propeller flap elevated, the, the perforator is here. And this is rotated after rotation in the, in the recipient area. You see, it nice. And we, we must also remember that nature sometimes is generous. And this is a funny case, a male, uh, 24 years old, with Achilles tendon injury. And uh, so I looked for a, a perforator from the media, from the uh, posterior tibial artery, and I found only this extremely small uh, pedicle, which was suitable for the position for uh, the coverage of the defect. So I decided to use, anyway, this uh, uh, almost invisible pedicle, and you see that at the release of the tunicate, the skin was perfectly vascularized. So we, I was able to cover entirely the defect. And you see the patient one day postoperatively. So the last uh, uh, topic that I would like to, uh, to show you briefly is the chimera flat. We know that uh, the Spontaneous structure, the subcutaneous structure of the Achilles tendon is quite frequent, particularly increasing the number of elder, uh, um, elder person who go for, uh, uh, for sport. Uh, very often, 25% orthopedic surgeon has uh, have the big complication, particularly the adhesions of the surgical wound, skin necrosis, uh, and also tendon necrosis and infection. What has been uh, suggested in the lecture, the most popular way to reconstruct uh, simultaneously the skin and the, and the Achilles tendon is to use the ALT flap, uh, uh, including the fasciolata flap. This is the fasciolata flap, fasciolata, which can be uh, rolled uh, around uh, the, the residual tendon, or anyway, it can be rolled uh, up to um, look like a tendon but it's still a fascia, so I don't think that this is the best option. What uh, I've been used uh, very successfully in the, in the past 10 years is uh, the radial forehead flaps, uh, including the flexor carpi radialis. This is the theoretical basis uh, on this flap. This is the flexor carpi radialis. This is the radial artery, and you see how well is vascularized the, the flexor carpi radialis by the radial artery. The other advantage is that we harvest the, the, the tendon together with the tendon sheath. So we guarantee, we guarantee a very good uh, tendon gliding uh, surface to our tendon. This is the defect. It's about uh, seven centimeter of defect. And uh, all the distal part of the Achilles tendon is, is gone. This is our flap, the skin, and the flexor carpi radialis, which can be up to 12 centimeter long. So it's a long tendon, and it is a real tendon. It's not a fascia, it's tendon. 
This is a stamp of the Achilles tendon. We make a hole, a tunnel in the, in the calcaneus bone in order to uh, drive the flexor carpi radialis inside the tunnel. Then it is rerouted proximally to find again the stamp of Achilles tendon. So in this case, we have a very strong reconstruction, very strong link with the calcaneus bone, impossible to damage, and good coverage of the skin. This is MRI six months postoperatively. I think the microsurgery improved uh, surgeon's creativity very much and gave to the surgeon much more options. The peripheral flap allows for a substantial remodeling and reshaping. And then microsurgical technique allows for multiple tissue reconstruction and provides innovative tools to restore function. And they give better cosmetic and function with a low impact in the donor site. Thank you very much for your attention and best wishes for your future profession. Thank you.